AI is seemingly everywhere nowadays. It's in our laptops, in our browsers, in our apps, and now it's in our phones. This is the Honor Magic 6 Pro. Now, Honor says the addition of AI makes this a superior phone versus all the other options available in its price range. But does adding AI really make this thing better? Or is that simply just another gimmick? Today, you'll find out. All right, before we start talking about AI and software, let's talk about the exterior of the phone. Now, there are very few flagship phones out there in the market today that I will comfortably use without the case, and the Magic 6 Pro is one of them. One of the reasons why I've been using this particular phone without a case is that the back is made out of hard vegan leather. It feels good, it feels great, it looks very hard wearing. I haven't had any issues with scratches or any of those problems with this particular uh, back panel yet. I've been using this for a month. There's really no uh, big issue as far as durability is concerned. I guess the biggest thing that you really have to uh, watch out for is the exposed camera module. Now the camera module is gigantic on this phone. Uh, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but personally, I like it. And since this is currently the flagship phone of Honor, they've gone to all of the trouble to make sure that it feels like a flagship phone. Now, the frame is metal. I think it is steel. It feels really good in the hands. Um, ergonomics wise, especially with the vegan leather back, it feels nice to hold you can easily hold it one-handed although the phone is a little big so if you have smaller hands or daintier hands than me i have gorilla hands you might have actually a problem using it one-handed but for uh, big guys like me you won't have an issue and since the honor magic 6 pro is a flagship phone you're getting flagship specs for its curved display so you're looking at a 6.8 inch LTPO OLED panel, very high brightness, HDR10, 120 hertz refresh rate, all of the trimmings that you'd expect from a flagship phone, the Honor Magic 6 Pro has. With how good most displays are nowadays for flagships, it's insane how bright these displays can get. The Honor Magic 6 Pro is no exception. It has a maximum brightness of 5,000 nits. That's pretty much as bright as you can get. That's more than enough for you to be able to see the display even under direct sunlight. Also, the display isn't just bright, it looks pretty freaking awesome too. The color saturation looks great. It's everything just looks amazing. Uh, the black levels look absolutely good. It's bang on. It's one of my favorite phones when it comes to consuming content from Netflix and from YouTube. And since this is an Honor phone that we're talking about, you know that the display protection is pretty damn tough. Now, they use something called the Nano Crystal Shield that they say is more durable than any other Honor phone that they've used a display protection on. So if you've seen how tough Honor phones are when they actually fall to the ground, this is twice the protection or twice the toughness of those phones so you know that this particular flagship can take abuse and survive. Now we have to talk about that gigantic camera bump at the back of the Honor Magic 6 Pro. Now Honor has put three of their most capable cameras on the back of their new flagship. So the main camera is a 50 megapixel Omnivision OV50H that has a variable aperture lens that can go from f1.4 all the way to f2.0. There's a laser autofocus feature built in as well as PDAF and OIS. Now the telephoto lens is very interesting because it's 180 megapixels. It can do 2.5x optical zoom only, but because of the high megapixel count, you can go up to 5x with some cropping without any details lost in the image. Now the last camera is a 50 megapixel ultra wide camera that is an Omnivision sensor also has PDAF and an aperture of f2.0. Now, as for the selfie camera, it's a 50 megapixel Sony IMX816 with a time of flight sensor attached to it. So it basically knows depth information that allows it to do some of the AI tricks. 
So if you didn't know, the Honor Magic 6 Pro is sitting at the top of the DxO Mark rankings and for good reason. In bright light, it captures really, really good photos with excellent sharpness and detail all around, even when facing challenging conditions like an overcast sky or a stormy day like what we experienced while we were in Shenzhen. Dynamic range is one thing that's very difficult to get right in a flagship phone, but the Honor Magic 6 Pro absolutely nails it. Uh, white balance is also pretty good for this particular phone when you are shooting with the main camera. So one thing I was really surprised with with the cameras of the Honor Magic 6 Pro is the 2.5x telephoto camera. Now, you can take 2.5x uh, photos, but you can also take 5x photos since the phone basically just crops some of, of the information or some of the pixels off of the 180 megapixel image that it takes to present you with a 5x zoomed image. It's surprising how much detail that this optical zoom lens actually picks up, especially in low light situations. But the images that we took using the zoom lens was actually on par with what we expected to get from the main camera. That's pretty amazing. One of the main features that Honor is actually trying to sell us on this phone is some of the AI features that they baked in. So the first one is a magic portal. So the idea here is that you can click and drag uh, anything on your screen and drag it to the right side of the display so you can use it or implement it uh, in a number of apps. You can use it in Slack, you can use it in Maps, you can use it as Notes, uh, and you can actually start using Google with it. So for example, if you come across an address, you can just basically click and drag that into the magic portal on the right side of the phone and you can select maps and it'll navigate for you. So another way to use magic portal is basically just to click and drag an image, uh, uh, an image that you uh, took a photo of, click and drag that and send it to Google where it will identify the image for you. In theory, these features should be able to make you search for things faster, but in practice, I found that it was just way easier to use either Google Maps or Google Image Search directly without having to use Magic Portal. And honestly, not everything can be dragged to Magic Portal. If I'm searching a website, for example, my or, or Unbox, for example, and I want to click and drag that, it doesn't really allow me to do that. It gives me options to open the link, basically visit that link instead of allowing me to drag it to Magic Portal. So another feature that sounded great on paper but really failed in practice was the motion sensing capture. Essentially, this allows you to track a subject, keep that subject in focus, and if that subject moves, the phone will automatically take a photo. It, it's pretty useful if you're covering, for example, a fencing match where you want to take good photos when, when your participants are lunging or moving around or doing any kind of dynamic movement. You want those action shots and you're not fast enough. Uh, motion uh, capture should allow you to take dramatic good photos when they move. But in practice, that's not really what happened. So when I was using it, as you can see in this B-roll, uh, doesn't really activate motion capture. So I track the subject, I put motion capture on, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And most of the images that I caught using uh, motion capture wasn't that great. I could have taken better photos myself without actually using motion capture. And one of the things I noticed is that the motion capture feature doesn't really like it when the people you are taking photos of are wearing uh, lightly colored uh, clothes. It throws off the white balance when, when you're actually trying to take images. These aren't really in line with the regular good photos that we take manually using the phone. So it really feels that the motion capture feature it still needs a lot of work. As for the phone's hardware, you're looking at a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. That is a hell of a lot of storage to just put all of your photos and your videos in. You're not gonna run out of storage anytime soon. And since this is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor we're talking about, it demolishes any app or game that you throw at it without any issues. So software-wise, you're looking at Android 14, 
paired with Honor's own Magic OS 8.0. Magic OS is a particularly pleasant experience to use. It's not a lot of bloatware. Um, you can use an app drawer if you want, or you can just go traditional style with your apps all laid out outside. Honestly, I don't really have any other big complaints about it aside from the whole, it looks a lot like EMUI thing, but you know, uh, aside from that, it's all good. So time to talk about the most magical thing about this phone, the battery life. So you're looking at a 5600 mAh battery and in such a slim phone, that's pretty amazing. Aside from that, you're also looking at around a two day battery or almost two days of battery life with medium to light use. So if you're not gaming, you're just using this phone for, I don't know, uh, just uh, answering uh, email messages and stuff like that, or watching a video or two short video clips, you're gonna get that amount of battery life, which is amazing for a phone of this caliber. Aside from that, you also get 100 watt fast charging. So you can get this thing up to 100 in less than 30 minutes if you manage to drain it. There's also 60 watt fast wireless charging. So if you have a fast wireless charger that goes up that fast, you can charge this uh, wirelessly uh, in less than I think 40 minutes. Should you buy this phone based on the AI promises that Honor gives you? No. The AI features on this phone either don't work well, they're buggy, or they don't accomplish, or they don't really make things easier or faster for you. The good news is the phone is great. It's amazing. It's one of the best flagships that you can consider today, uh, especially with the pricing, which we'll talk about later. The cameras are good. The design, I feel it's really premium. The display is good. Battery life is amazing. Performance is great. So there really is no reason for Honor to try and tack AI on top of it as a selling point because the phone itself is an amazing phone. So I don't know if you're looking for an ultimate AI phone, this isn't it. But if you're looking for a good phone, a good camera phone, a good all around device, this is the phone that you should buy. So let's talk about pricing. So as I'm recording this, I'm recording this uh, May 3. Uh, Honor told me that the price for this particular phone is 59,990. They're trying to get it lower. So if it is lower, we're gonna be putting the price right here and I will be wrong. But right now it's at that price, you're looking at flagship pricing, but then again, this is a flagship phone. It's a damn good flagship phone, definitely. So that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully Honor gets the pricing down lower for the launch. Uh, really hope so, uh, because it's, they're gonna sell a lot of these if they do. Uh, that's, that's it. If you have any other questions about the Honor, Magic 6 Pro, or any other phones that we've talked about, just leave it down below. Uh, thank you very much, guys. My name is John. Till we see you next time.